Thank you. Uh, I will be talking about uh, basically international experience. Uh, uh, first, I'd like to note that uh, my research team and I have no conflicts of interest in this research. As people doing international epidemiology, we find it very, very hard to find anybody who wants to give us enough money to generate a conflict of interest. The next few slides will look at global drug use. This comes from the uh, recent UNODC World Drug Report. A note of caution that this is based on official country reporting, uh, which is not always uh, without some bias. Uh, but this is uh, a map of global opioid use with the darker countries having the higher rates so that you can see that uh, North America uh, and Eastern Europe and Australia uh, have very high rates. This is cocaine uh, use. Uh, again, North America and uh, particularly South America, Australia, uh, Western Europe, uh, but some uh, cocaine use uh, developing also in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. And I should also note that there's a, a tremendous amount of opioid use in Central Asia. And finally, uh, this is the most recent data on amphetamine use. Uh, again, uh, High-income countries like the United States and Australia tend to be in the lead, uh, but there's a substantial amount of amphetamine use in South America and in Eastern Europe. So that the problem of drug use and HIV is no longer confined to high-income countries. It is truly an international problem. Uh, it, the most recent estimates would indicate about two-thirds of people who inject drugs and are infected with HIV live in low- and middle-income countries. The objectives of these studies will, were to look at structural level needle syringe programs and opiate substitution treatment in low and middle income countries, examining overall retention of participants in the OST programs and changes in biomarkers, HIV and HCV, among participants in the needle syringe programs. Uh, we've seen remarkable success for HIV prevention for persons who inject drugs in high-income uh, countries. The incidence typically is now less than 0.5 per 100 person years at risk. Uh, in the U.S., we're seeing about 4,000 newly ca identified cases of HIV among people who inject drugs out of a population of about 1.3 million people who inject drugs. Uh, and many of these infections uh, among people who inject drugs are actually sexual transmission. So even with all of the problems we've had in the United States for reducing injecting-related transmission, we're down, down to very, very low levels. Uh, however, there are special problems for low- and middle-income countries, uh, in particular, simple funding for the programs uh, can be quite problematic. There, these countries often lack trained staff for proper implementation of the programs. And just to note that uh, tip, often when you do train the staff, they leave for better paying jobs in other countries. Implementation of the programs may not follow good clinical practices. In particular, there may be restrictions on the number of syringes that are exchanged, restrictions on methadone dosages, uh, lack of take-home dosages. Many of the pr 
programs in low and middle income countries require people to attend seven days a week. And there's also the important problem of severe stigmatization of drug users in many low and middle income countries that may discourage people from actually coming to participate in the programs. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, in these reviews, we focused on low and middle income countries as defined by the World Bank classification. Uh, to date, there has not been systematic reviews. Uh, and also to point out that many of these uh, countries have HIV prevalence among people who inject drugs that has surpassed 20%. Uh, we did standard systematic review procedures, including following uh, PRISMA guidelines. For the NSP programs, we required at least 50% coverage of the local injecting population with at least 10 to 15 syringes available per injector per year. We were really interested in large-scale structural programs. We were not interested in trying to study pilot syringe exchange programs. Uh, we wanted to look at programs that had the potential to affect the e local epidemic and not just pilot programs. For our OST programs, we looked at retention over time. Uh, retention over time has probably been the single best indicator of the success of methadone and buprenorphine treatment. Uh, the, we used primary published studies uh, and also national surveillance reports for HIV. The, to be eligible for inclusion in the systematic review, the studies had to provide data over the period of NSP implementation or during uh, longitudinal data for people in OST treatment. And the NSP studies had to include at least 95% injectors. Uh, the OST studies could include people who used any form of opiates, whether it was injecting or non-injecting use. We found 12 NSP studies and 63 OST studies from 17 different low middle income countries including Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Brazil, China, the Republic of Georgia, India, Indonesia, Iran, Kyrgyzstan, Lithuania, Malaysia, Mauritius, Taiwan, Tanzania, Thailand, Ukraine, and Vietnam. So we did get a fairly wide geographic representation. In the NSP studies, seven of the nine locations that analyzed HIV prevalence showed a decrease after implementation of the needle syringe programs. All three locations that analyzed HCV prevalence reported decreasing, and one uh, study showed uh, stabilization of HCV incidence uh, in association with the expansion of the needle syringe program. Three of the four countries with national HIV surveillance data demonstrated decreases in the numbers of newly reported HIV cases among drug injectors during uh, expansion and implementation of the NSP programs. Uh, this shows graphically the uh, changes in HIV prevalence among people who inject drugs in association with the uh, expansion of the needle syringe programs. Uh, so that uh, most, of, there are a few, Two countries that actually showed uh, increases, but all of the others showed decreases. This shows the HCV prevalence changes. Uh, all three countries reporting uh, HCV prevalence showed decreases. For the OST programs, uh, we found basically similar results to what has been reported from high income countries that the weighted mean uh, retention at 12 months was slightly over 50%. Uh, and 50% is usually considered to be the desirable retention level for 12 months. Uh, retention was slightly higher in programs that utilize methadone compared to buprenorphine, although this was not uh, statistically significant. We did see a dose 
dosage variation in these OST programs, but again, there was no statistically significant difference. However, I would mention that all of these programs were following WHO guidelines for uh, appropriate dosing, so that we did not have programs that were uh, dramatically underdosing. Uh, this shows a scatter plot of the OST treatment uh, with months retained in treatment uh, along the X axis. There is considerable variation in early retention, but once you get out to uh, 12 months, the average is about 50%, and when you go beyond 12 months, uh, the average increases over time. Okay. So the majority of the NSP studies were showing uh, positive results. There were some explanations for the uh, outliers that had negative results. In Lithuania, the increase in newly reported cases of HIV among drug injectors occurred after there was uh, substantial defunding of the NSP programs, so that there was a dose response effect that when you defund the programs, they saw increases in newly reported HIV cases. In Porto Alegre, Brazil, they attributed the continuing rise in uh, their HIV epidemic among uh, drug injectors uh, be, to a late startup and expansion of the NSP programs. And in Dhaka, Bangladesh, uh, they had early implementation of their NSP programs uh, the later increase in bloodborne infection was associated with high risk sexual transmission rather than injecting related transmission. In the OSD programs, uh, in, in, on average, low and middle income countries have reached the, the desired 50% retention level after 12 months. Uh, retention in the programs has been associated with uh, better adherence to heart, higher levels of virologic uh, response to heart, and reduced crime and in increased legal employment. Uh, I do need to mention some of the limitations. Uh, as in all systematic reviews, the quality of the data of the studies going into the review uh, is an important limiting factor. Uh, also, the reductions in bloodborne infections cannot be attributed solely to the needle syringe programs. Uh, there may have been other factors occurring in the local epidemic. Uh, in many of these low and in middle income countries, the programs have only started in the last five to 10 years, so that we don't really have enough data for very firm long-term uh, conclusions. And similar to the uh, NSP programs, in the OST programs, there could have been other factors that influenced uh, the outcome measure of retention. Okay, but in conclusion, uh, if implemented on a large scale and according to WHO guidelines, HIV prevention programs, harm reduction programs for drug users in low and middle income countries appear to be as successful as the programs in high income countries in terms of retaining uh, people in treatment and reducing bloodborne infections. Uh, these programs are gaining wider acceptance in low and middle income countries. Uh, there have been pilot programs that are transitioning to public health scale programs. But it's important that implementation follow good clinical practices. It's important that implementation be done on a public health scale. Again, pilot programs do not stop epidemics. Sustainability remains a critical issue, particularly as international funding declines. Uh, we're seeing uh, reductions in global fund and in PEPFAR funding. Uh, so that sustaining these programs will be a problem. And uh, finally, continued monitoring and evaluation of these programs will be needed simply because they're off to a good start does not mean that they will necessarily continue 
uh, on this path. Okay. Uh, here are a number of the references uh, for the studies. And the needle syringe systematic review uh, was recently published in BMC Public Health and the review of the uh, retention and OST programs is currently in press at addiction. Thank you.